My people say it this way. They say, if you know how to think, you will know how to thank. Those who can think deeply, they are the people that will understand that it's always good to say thank you to God. Most of the time, we feel too proud, too arrogant. We feel too pompous, and we forget God. God is never our mate. It's not a man. The Bible says not God is not a man. Most of the time, we treat God the way we treat fellow human beings. When we are looking for children, God, if you can give me a child, and God gives the child, the next thing is we begin to use the same child to misbehave to God. We change our pattern. We change our ways of life. The way we talk, the way we worship, everything has changed simply because God bless us. You need a job, God bless you with a job. You begin to complain. Use the same job to complain. When you show God that you are grateful, God blesses you even more. Amen. Amen. Every little step you take, don't complain about the steps you have not taken. Thank him for the one you have taken already. Thank him for what he has done. The Bible says don't despise the days of little beginning. Who has despised it? That was the question. So when he saw, this man saw that he was healed, he returned. He returned. This is what we don't do many times. We don't return to God to say, thank you, sir. Thank you for blessing me. You went to the hospital and you came back alive. And you cannot say, thank God. Some people went to the same hospital and they died. You delivered a baby safely. Why do you think it's not a big deal? Just go and hear the next person's story who went to the same hospital to deliver the same baby you just delivered and did not make it out. Or the baby died. You had a flat tire going to work in the morning instead of you causing everybody that passed by. Why don't you say, God, I don't understand why this flat tire had happened. But I thank you. Because in everything, your word says, I should thank you. It doesn't even make sense to me to thank you. But I thank you anyway. Because that flat tire may be a saving grace. Maybe there's an accident just a mile away. And God allowed the flat tire to stop you until the evil passes. And many times because we don't see what is ahead of us, we complain. We flare up. We get angry. Everything the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Paul said, for we know that all things work together. All things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All things work together together. For the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. All things. How grateful are you this morning that your children are doing fine? They woke up this morning. There's a home somewhere in the world, I don't know where it is, where they are crying now because somebody did not wake up this morning. There's a place somewhere in this world today that all the families, they are gathered around a hospital bed and they are asking, they are checking the monitor. Will he make it? Will she make it? They woke up. Last night, all was well. This morning, everything is upside down. But you woke up this morning. You went to your children's room. You saw them there sleeping. You woke them up and they answered you. Somebody, a parent somewhere did dissenting. And that child did not respond. If you can't thank God for anything, thank God for life. Thank God for life. As long as there is life, there is hope. Your tomorrow will be great. Many of us will complain. We, we are experts at the complaint counter. Every day we complain. And God is asking, have you thanked me for what I did? You keep harassing me with your prayer. You keep harassing me with your complaint every day. I have not done this. I have not done that. What about what I have done? I have not even heard one thing from you. In 10 years. Every day is complaining what I have not done. Even husband and wife. If your wife is always complaining or your husband is always complaining, you will get angry. Say, can't you even find something good that I have ever done? You keep complaining. Thank God for where you are. When you thank God for the level where you are, he will take you to a higher level. No matter how poor your condition or position is, I guarantee you, you are somebody's prayer point. Where you are, you don't like it, you are complaining, you are frustrated by some people. They are praying to God to be where you are. And here you are complaining about your own condition. I say, God, what have you done for me? I can imagine God looking down from heaven and looking at that person. Look at this Ingrid. 
Yesterday he should have died. I saved him. And this morning he is complaining against me. Because I have not given him that job. And yet, the job he's looking for is not as good as the one I have for him next year or next month. He's complaining today. I wish we can see the heart of God. Many of us will be crying and say, God, I am so sorry. Because Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, his touch towards us are not evil. They are good. Who is that father who will always think bad of his children? No. Every good father and God is one will always think good of his children. God has plans for us that this word has never seen. Chapter 17, verse 17 to 18. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? Look at that question from Jesus. Jesus was even surprised. I thought ten people came to me, and I thought I told ten people to go and show themselves to the priest, because I know they will be healed. Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? And the nine is in the church. The nine that will not say thank you, sir. Where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I believe strongly that there is a difference between being healed and being made well. Those who did not come to say thank you, they were not made well. They were healed. So if you are healed, the problem can come back again. But if you are made well, you are made whole. It is a complete healing. So when you thank God for one thing, that thing can never diminish. Jesus practiced this several times. He was going to feed thousands of people with little boy's meal. The Bible says he gave thanks for us. Whatever you thank God for will multiply. It is a divine secret, a divine principle that Jesus practiced again and again. He was going to bring Lazarus out. The Bible said he gave thanks. Father, I thank you because you have heard me. Giving thanks is powerful. When we show gratitude, look, even those of us, we human beings, if you do something for somebody, you help somebody, and the person did not say thank you, how do you feel? If, if we want to be honest, you won't like it. And when you thank somebody, who had helped you, tomorrow when you knock on that person's door, what do you think will happen? The person will be willing to help again. But I helped you yesterday. You did not show gratitude. You did not say thank you. You are coming again tomorrow. I won't, I won't be happy to help. It's natural. Because of the fear of God, I may say, well, let me help again. But to get it from my heart, for me to willingly, joyfully help you, because you didn't say thank you, that may hurt me a little. Psalm 106 verse 13. Psalm 106 verse 13. It says, they soon forgot his works. They soon, we always forget it quickly. They soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel. They soon forgot his work. Every time, look at the way human beings, look at the way we are. Every time we are asking God for something, immediately we get it. We don't remember the pain we went through before we got it. So now that we have it, we just forget. We don't remember to thank God anymore. And all kinds of things we do. Some may say, I will do it later. When you are, you are supposed to say thank you, some of us will say, I will do it later. Maybe the nine lepers that didn't return, some of them were like, I'm going to come back and thank him later. Not now. I'll come back later. Some may say it wasn't really serious anyway. Have you seen people like that before? You help them. After the problem is solved, they begin to tell you that it wasn't really a big deal. And they cry to you. They came when they were crying. When they were really in that problem, they were crying. But when you help them solve the problem, they be, oh, no, it's not a big deal anyway. Me and my wife, we helped a lady. She wanted to come to America. She was really, really, really disturbing my wife to write an invitation. My wife spoke to me. I wrote the invitation. I put all my vital documents, information, I put it out there. This lady got a visa in Lagos, Nigeria. When she came to America, she did not even tell us. She came to D.C. I was in D.C. We were in D.C. then. She did not even mention it, that she was in the country. When my wife called to check on her, have you traveled to America? She said, I came. 
And she also said, well, at the interview, they didn't even ask for the document anyway. I said, look at you. Look at Ingrid. They did not even ask for the document anyway. So you did not ask. But I'm sure you filled the form and put all my information there. And now you say, that even if they did not ask you, because it's already in the form, the one who interviewed you saw my address, my everything. She did not even tell us she came. How can that one call me next time? I was speaking tongues. I'll find. <laughs> they will tell you it is not serious. Or oh, I will have gotten well anyway. You have somebody to say, I would have gotten it anyway. And that has happened. People who apply for job, they say, I would have, if you don't help me, somebody else will help me. How can you say that? And they do that to God too. If you don't help me, somebody else will help me. God, God just use it. No, don't talk. You are wicked. You are evil if you say that. Be grateful. Thank God for that person. Even if you think the help did not come through that person, thank that person for at least making effort to help you when you needed that help. That's why some people will never get help again because they, they have injured the same heart that bled for them. Amen. And some will say he didn't really do anything special. That's how we downgrade every help. And you think because you have crossed this bridge now, somebody help you to cross the bridge now, you think you won't need the person again? Or somebody help you to climb the ladder? And after you just kick the ladder, you will want to come down one day. You will now know how to beg. You know some people, because they have burnt the bridge, when they need that help again, they will go and get somebody. Can you help me call her? The same person you could call before. You know what you have done. So now you are looking for a third party and say, please help me call. Talk to him for me. And you will never even disclose to that person what you did. Because your attitude can determine your attitude. Some people, they have bad attitude. They bomb bridges everywhere they go. Amen. Let's learn how to show gratitude. You thank God. I know a culture in Africa. I, I, by, by the grace of God, my culture, the Yoruba culture, I'm not celebrating because I'm a Yoruba person. But the way the Yorubas will thank you. You do something for them today, they will thank you today. When they see you in the evening, they will thank you. When they see you tomorrow, they will thank you. When they see you the day after tomorrow, they will thank you. If you get to a time, you say, enough. You have thanked me enough. They will say, it's not enough. When they see you next week, they will say, thank you, sir, for what you did for me last week. How can you be wrong thanking somebody? You can never be wrong. Even if the person is saying, it is too much. He's just saying it's too much, but he likes it. That's the truth. He's just saying it's too much. He likes it. If you don't do it, you'll see the red eye. Just keep thanking, thanking. Even when they do little things, give them big thanks. Because if you can thank them big for that little thing they do, they will be thinking that, what if we have done something big? This person will kill us with thanks. It's always good to show gratitude. And a good heart, anybody with a good heart will do that. You don't struggle. And you see, many people who don't know how to thank man, they don't know how to thank God. They hide under the platform that the glory belongs to God is a lie. They will deny man the thanks and deny God the glory. Please, children of God, Jesus may come tonight or come tomorrow. Even if he doesn't come, life is not guaranteed. We can die any time. And when we die, we cross to the world beyond, where we get an account of how we lived our lives. Every secret sins will be exposed. Every wrong thought will be revealed. But one of the things we are dealing with this morning is how grateful are we? How thankful are you that you can walk? I read the story of a man, 70-year-old man, who was admitted at the hospital. And when they told him that he will have to use oxygen tank and they pass the tube, Nessa what? Nessa candula. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm not in the health profession. Let me call it what I know. Dr. O'Connor will allow me. The tube, right? They pass it into the nursery. And they put a tank. The man began to cry. And the doctors, the nurses, they were like, why are you crying? Is it because of the beer? He said, no. 
I have money to pay. I just realized now that for 70 years of my life, I've been breathing and I never paid God for the oxygen I use. Now I have to pay. Do you know we need to thank God for the ability to breathe? That this knows, look at us. We are breathing effortlessly. We are not even paying attention. Some people, they can't catch a breath unless it is mechanized to take one. And the same God who loves you also loves them. They can breathe easily. I told you one day I was going to eat. I was saying my normal prayer. Father, bless this food. Thank you for providing this food. Please provide for those who are hungry. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I don't like long prayers. Once I say the right things, it is enough for me. I said that prayer, I was going to eat, and the Holy Spirit said one more thing. I said, what is it? He said, thank me for the ability to eat. Since that day, I put it in my prayer. God, I thank you for the ability to eat because it is not automatic. There are people who can't eat anymore. There was a lady, a woman on the bed. She was a double amputee, which means they cut her leg from the, from the knee. She was on that bed. She didn't talk to us. I was just observing. There was the CNA was, was taking care of her, but we were there to just observe. And I saw bitterness in her eyes. Then the, the, the CNA said she's been there for three years. On that bed, some people, they have bed sore. Because they don't leave bed, they have to roll them from one side to another. Look, if you sleep in your own bed for 24 hours, you will get tired. You will hit that bed. You want to get out. Three years, she was there. Double amputee. To make matter worse, they said she has not tasted food in years. Because there was G-tube. Is it G-tube? They pass it through her stomach. So she was being fed with liquid food. If you think that is the worst. No. That is not the worst. It would have been better to go and to die and rest than to be in that pain. So let's thank God. Don't, don't, don't complain about where you want to be. Thank God for where you are. Because I guarantee you there are people cute. They want to be where you are. They line up behind you. Let's be grateful. Every little step, every little blessing show God gratitude. And I pray somebody is going to do that today.